Welcome, I'm John Gosh with Dojo TV Sensei for Aikido and we're going to begin this first series of tapes here with the art of Ukemi. Uh, ukemi means the person or the way of receiving technique in Aikido, usually a fall or a pin or uh, some sort of other type of manipulation that we need the uh, partner or the uke, person who receives the fall, to be able to be a little bit more cooperative so we don't tear them up or, or torque them up uh, unnecessarily as we're training in Aikido. So there is some basic falls that we want to show you. There's other gravity martial arts, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, Aikido, things like that that have falling. Aikido likes to take their falling a little softer. We like to take a little bit more less impact on the body. So we round off, we throw a little bit more energy into our, into our rolls. And so we're going to begin today to start off with the forward roll. Now, my assistant, Mr. Scott Sobel, okay, we're going to start you off very basic. I'm going to have Scott down on his one knee, all right, and we're going to put it on a little bit of an angle here. And what I'm going to have Scott do is just stand on his one leg. Uh, at this point right now, I'm going to have him reach forward and put his palm downward and his fingers to inverted toward him. Now what we've got here is a setup to roll over the arm. Now his, his goal for his forward roll will be to go over the line of the arm, across the shoulder to the opposite hip, keeping the head and everything tucked in. He's going to extend the arm out in another in a very uh, an arc so as not to collapse the elbow and go into smashing his collarbone or his shoulder into the mat or into the ground. We're going to support it with a little bit of uh, fingers on fingers or fingertips to fingertips here, arcing this circle even more for him. To beginners, this is very much a very pleasing way to start falling because all you have to do is tuck yourself in like a ball and go over. I tell most of my beginners, don't unravel. The main problem is they unravel too soon. They flip over or they roll over and they feel that they're done and they straighten themselves out and then the rest of their body whips over. Keep yourself in a circle like so until your feet hit the mat from the other side. Now what Scott's going to do here is Scott is just going to just push on his back leg, pull on his and just roll right over that thing like so. All right, he comes back into the same position. All right, again, he's going to go ahead and just set himself up, make sure he's loose, exhale as he rolls so he doesn't knock the air out, he takes control of it and just rolls gently. Okay, now he's going from shoulder to opposite hip. Once he gets a little bit better with that, we stand him up a little bit. And I'm just gonna tell Scott, Mr. Scott, would you just extend a little forward, get down as low as you can without bending your knees to the ground. Now at this point, Scott is now bending down a little bit lower. He's a little higher, still arcing that arm slightly, and he's gonna kick off and roll again. All right, now he comes right back up. No matter how hard you're thrown in Aikido, if you can try to control, not try to stop the energy of the, of, of the throw, but control it to your benefit, you can extend that energy out and make that roll really elongated so it, it, it doesn't hit with such impact. Uh, this is what we strive to do in Aikido when we, we, we're working with our ukemi. Uh, now what Scott, once he gets this down, he can just start to extend out and just go from a roll from a standing position very nice and gently, not projecting so much into it, but as much as he's just extending a little bit and absorbing the fall itself. Not on him, but in the arc. There it is. Nice and smooth. Again, Mr. Scott, and this threw me a left and then a right arm going across. And he turns around, he does the other side. Okay. And he's up on his feet in a kamai or stance. Uh, Hanmi stance, which is a triangle stance, ready to, to defend himself. Okay, that is the forward roll. Okay, uh, Mayokemi, or front roll, or may, uh, front falling, we can name to it, but I'm just going to say in English, that's our forward roll. The more moves like that would come into play would be me throwing Scott here, forward roll, and things like that. To start off beginning Aikido extensions and teaching people how to, to roll and then of course a lot of harder uh, throws he would be able to uh, disperse the impact by rolling out of it. So forward roll is probably the first one we teach you on the rolling and um, 
we'll take as long as we need to to get that down. But before you can do major Aikido throwing techniques, you need to learn the ukemi. If you do not learn the falling, you, you, dojo TV or not, you cannot learn Aikido. So you need to learn how to fall. So we're going to make sure we get that to you. Okay, our next ukemi or falling technique that we'll teach you Aikido style is going to be the back break fall and the back roll. Now what we're going to do, I'm getting my assistant Mr. Scott Sobel here, is we're going to start you out, as you guess you must, down on the ground already. Now when we teach beginners, let's have you angle a little bit here tonight. When we teach beginners, we have them sit down, bend one of the legs here, slightly bend that other leg, you don't have to lock up anything. Now what we're going to work with is we're going to work with teaching you how to keep your back in an arc. The secret to Aikido falling is not to take the back, the impact of the boom, and make sure you arc that impact and round it off and disseminate the impact that you're getting from the ground in an arc in a circular motion. Even the falling is done that way in Aikido. So we have to go ahead and project energy through. At this point, how do we do that? Through your breath. So you must exhale when you take a fall and do not hold the air in. At this point, what we're going to do is have Scott do a little rocking chair motion here. He's just going to rock back, come to his shoulders, come back up. He's just going to rock back and come to his shoulders and come back up. Now, what we're going to teach him to do is we're going to have him rock back, come back up on the one knee, and goes again. And then we train the student to come back standing in the Hanmi triangular stance. As he comes back up, he's in the Hanmi triangular stance. He goes back down, he bends the knee, goes back, comes back up. Now you notice he ain't falling like timber. He ain't falling like a tree, straight back. He's absorbing the fall. And let me show you what this will do. Um, the, the, the impact that he would get on a push or anything, he just, if he fights that, he's going to timber over. Okay? What he's going to do is absorb this. Even in Aikido, we absorb, even if we can't do a technique, we absorb the attack, absorb it like a sponge and take it to protect himself. Instead of falling straight back, he's going to step back. And even if I push him hard, he's going to step back and do this rocking motion. Now we're going to get into this smacking part that he just did. Have a seat. We just gave you the basics of back roll and back break fall. All right? Ushiro Kemi. That means back or rear. Now at this point here, we're going to teach Scott to learn how to dissipate the power going to the spinal column and skull, but not just arcing, but hitting what we call smacking or break falling, smacking the mat. Now the difference here is that he's got to smack with the palm, he's going to smack with a 45 degree angle from the back on both arms, and he's going to bring it up as fast as he possibly can, as fast as he smacked it. So he's going to act like the mat's really steaming hot. And it's like, it brings it right back. So we're going to start Scott laying down. And I want to go ahead and get you guys focused in on this. I'm going to have Scott tuck his chin in, get used to tucking that chin in. And he takes eight pounds of pressure to whiplash it. And that's about this hard. So if your neck whips, you might not think it's much, but the next day, when you can't turn, somebody calls you, you can't turn around, then you're out of Aikido for three weeks. You know, then you definitely have to continue to watch Dojo TV. The situation goes, we're going to put the hands at a 45 degree angle when we hit. He's going to break the palm to his mouth, flat, just down to a 45 degree angle, come back up, immediate. As he does that, he exhales with a ki or spirit shout. Just let the air out as he hits. So I'm going to give him a couple to do full tilt here. Go ahead. Another one. And another one. Okay, now he's going to sit up, back in that roll, and he's going to arc himself back bringing the hips with him when he goes back. Now, before he touches his head, he shouldn't try to avoid touching his head on the ground, but it can't be helped sometimes. Before, let's say, the shoulders hit, he will make this break fall happen. We don't want to reach back because you want to put all the weight in your wrist, you'll break your wrist. So watch what happens here. He arcs back, he smacks, a little bit more 45 instead of 90. Again, and then comes back. All right, now we'll do the one leg, go up on the one knee, and go back in, break fall, comes back up, then we're going to do it standing, comes back in, break falls, and back up. 
That's your back brake fault. Now, so times that you can't absorb the power, it's too great. They've done something, you didn't get off the line, something happened where you're getting projected. What's going to happen is that you can't, this won't absorb it enough. Then you must learn to let your body go with it, and then what's going to happen, you're going to have to do a back roll. Here's where back roll comes in handy. He, I do him in such a move that he can't handle it, or we're, do, we're doing Aikido and we're doing a move. But anyway, if he cannot handle this, I get him in one of our Aikido moves, this is like a Shihonagi, I get him and I throw so much power into this, he can't do a back break fall, he's going to have to let it go. Now watch what happens. Okay? Now I threw a lot of power into that, more than it should be. But the thing of it is, is that to absorb it will be too much here. So you let it go. You breathe with it and you let it go. And that's how you had to do the back roll. Let's see. The back roll is the opposite of the forward roll. What he's going to do is he's going to go from hip to shoulder instead of shoulder to hip. Let's just go ahead and just show you how to do He's going to do one just freestyle back roll. Just go ahead. Okay, again, Mr. Scott. Now, Mr. Scott's going to take this toe and touch it back here. Now, which, and as he goes over, hold that posture for me. He's on his one shoulder, opposite shoulder. So he rolled over that hip to that opposite shoulder, all the way up to Mr. Scott. Okay, now show, show him the forward roll, and then go right into a back roll after that. He does the forward roll. Now watch the back roll. It's the opposite of what he just did. Forward roll, back roll. Forward roll, back roll. It's the opposite of what he just did. So there's your back roll. The only finer points I can say to you on that is that it all comes from your basic training of this. Okay? Now, we have a name, Japanese name, for this exercise. This is a Ukemi exercise called, uh, there's several different names, but one I use is Koho Tendondo. Rocking exercise. It's a rowing exercise. It gets you used to handling the linear ground in a circular motion. Okay, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, give you one of the most difficult falls to take. Uh, There's several, several different theories on how to show someone how to take uh, this front fall. Uh, we're going to show you why we need to do a thing like a front fall. It's not a roll, it's an actual fall. There's a lot of techniques where we get control of an extremity like an arm and we row down a person with, with great force and they need to learn how to take the impact of that by just not just holding their hand out because all that impact could go into their wrist. They need to learn how to angle their body so that the fall can be taken uh, without any damage to the internal organs and the face and, and the groin and everything else. So what I teach my people, I start my people out on their knees, firstly, with this situation. I get them used to falling on their face. The fear of that floor or ground or anything coming really close at you can make you be very inhibited on your Aikido training. And obviously when you're afraid to fall, you can't express yourself and the person that's training with you cannot do their technique full tilt or work with you with any freedom. So everybody's restricted and the energy is, is bogged up and, and uh, stagnant. So we need to work, work with the falling. The falling is much more important for physical, but the mental part of the falling, okay, is important because it gives you confidence if you can take to make a friend of the ground, you'll have a lot of confidence. So if you're not afraid to fall, you're not afraid to take the technique, you can really express yourself in the Aikido training. So what we're going to start with is, Mr. Scott, I want him to go ahead and take his hands and put them up to his face at a 45 degree angle. Now, as, he's, as you notice, he's got this. I'm going to tilt his elbows just a little bit. Have to fix him a little bit. All right, just tilt his elbows a little bit. Now, what I'm going to tell Scott to do is, before he hits his hands onto the mat here, He's going to have to turn his head one way or another so his nose don't come peeking through here and smash into the ground. So that's a rule. He'll have to turn his head one way or another. What I'm going to have Scott do is rise off his heels and I'm just going to have him timber straight down and he's going to absorb the brake fall with this part of the arm. Hopefully elbow doesn't get involved. He's also going to arc his back up away from it with an exhale to keep all these other uh, parts of, of the body not having any conflict with the, with the ground. So at this point here, I'm just going to let him timber. Okay, now see he starts spreading his legs there. We're going to get into that training 
of spreading your legs to keep the hips and the groin off. This type of break fall, I don't have too many of my Aikido people doing it. I'm not saying they don't, but I have a lot of them uh, feel that it's too much impact to train on the lower spine. Uh, Mr. Scott here is a chiropractor. I don't know. What do you feel about that? A lot of impact. A lot of impact. So we don't want to stay there a long time. All right, so to just train you for the shock value of maybe taking a hard front fall, this is what we do. We're going to stand him up now. We're going to have him bend his knees. We're going to have him come here. And we're going to have him kind of crouch out like a tiger. Hey. Crouch out like a tiger and kick his legs out wide. And watch what happens here. And up. Learn how to fall like that. Not that you would fall like that all the time, but learn how to take that impact with the face going first. You got that down, that'll take the psyche out of falling forward. Now this is the way I would like you to go ahead. Eventually in Aikido, you've been taken down with certain energies. All right? Instead of taking that fall like that, Scott will probably do the same thing with his hands, but what he'll also do is come in like he's sliding in the home plate. And he's going to absorb the, the fall, not straight down, but on an angle, like a plane landing on a, on a runway. So he's going to absorb it slowly. So watch what happens here. Eventually, we'd like to go ahead and have him learn how to slide in the home plate. So if I was to take Mr. Scott here, row him down, take him here, see how he kind of just skated in there, and then I can go ahead and really cut loose because he's got energy moving. He's not stopping and trying to fall. He's going right with it. He's got energy moving. Aikido practice takes a lot of mutual cooperation in the training. To develop Aiki, connective energy, you need to have a partner that's going to work with you and not fight you. Doesn't mean that we give technique to you and it's all fake. It means that the only way to develop internal power, key, and the only way to develop breathing methodologies that are going to be correct where you're not holding your breath with motion is to have a training methodology that there is a cooperation going on. Ukemi is where it comes in big time. If a person wants to trash you, they're going to trash you. You need to absorb your, your, your technique and salvage yourself. So that's why it's so important to learn Ukemi. Again, I'm going to let Scott do this free fall right on down and just slide right in. Do that for me again. And see how he takes the legs up? He just kind of just slides right on in, and then you can go ahead and pin him from that. That's what we call the front break fall. Okay, the last uh, ukemi I'm going to teach, or the fall I'm going to teach today is, is a forward roll with a break fall. My ukemi. Forward roll with the break hole. What you're going to do is have two pieces of two different rolls in this, or falls. You're going to have a forward roll, which we showed earlier, and we're going to have a side break fall to it. Now, the side break fall is not a separate fall per se, but you're going to end up on your side in this, this next fall, so we're going to show you how to do a side break fall. Before we get started with this, this uh, forward roll with a break fall, we're going to show you how to do the side break fall. I'm going to my assistant, Mr. Scott, come on out. Okay, now what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to have Mr. Scott sit down. At this point, Mr. Scott's on his back lat, not totally on his ribs, but mainly on that back lat area. We don't want him back so far like that. He said he might as well do a back break fall. So he's right here. Same break fall with the mat, tapping the mat, smacking the mat series. You just smack it, pull it right on back, absorbing the power of the uh, impact from the fall. This leg has come, come up so we can absorb this. If we sandwich these legs together, Mr. Scott would have some groin problems. If the leg comes across over top there, that happens a lot. And when I've trained in Japan, a lot of the ukemi, they just take whatever they can get. If that's okay and he can get up out of it and he can, you know, doesn't feel uncomfortable, fine. I find that the way I'm doing it is, is try to do it the proper way, and that way uh, you can absorb it without any injury. At this point, I'm going to have Scott stand up, and what we're going to do is show you how to get into this thing. Now, there is multi-levels of doing this. You can go down half crotch it, you can, you can start out like this and just fall to the side, but I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to show you what to do standing. You're going to take one leg and act like you're kicking a soccer ball. At the same time, that means the side you're going to be laying on. At the same time, he's going to bring his arm up, and then he's going to bend that base leg and get down on the ground and do a break fall. See what he does? He just sets himself right down. Again, Mr. Scott, left and right. Other side. 
you're kind of rocking like a banana there a little bit, and that's kind of what we we're looking for. Now, we're going to continue into the forward roll with a break ball. That break ball he just did is the second part of this move I'm going to, this fall I'm going to show you. Forward roll. Let's look at the forward roll again. Let's just got to do a forward roll. Let's look at the side break fall again. And then we're going to put that together. Now watch what happens. Mr. Scott will do a forward roll in mid-flight. As he's going over, he will change his body alignment to head toward that side break fall. Why do we need to do this fall? This fall is probably used more in Aikido than any other fall. We do at least 40% of our throwing techniques land you in this type of fall. Okay? Either that or a high back break fall. This is one of the most advanced falls you can take. You do hip throws, we can do all kinds of different moves, but the theory of him going over and landing on his side, forward roll and then land on the side, is used in a lot of different techniques. So at this weight rate, what we're going to go ahead and do is have Mr. Scott forward roll. In the middle of this forward roll, you can start seeing where he transitions his legs to, to land over here. Uh, sometimes a forward roll out of some Aikido techniques can, is not enough, especially on a wrist kodagaishi, a wrist turnout. I, he could do a forward roll out of this, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to unlet, let go of his wrist. So a forward roll with a break fall would unravel him out of this pressure, and it also would make me be able to train full, more full tilt. So uh, the better the uke, the better the nage person throwing, because we definitely have a mutual cooperation thing. And if he doesn't know his uke, I can't look good. Simple as that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the forward roll with a break fall. All right, the other side. Okay, now before we roll here, Mr. Scott, you right to the camera and stay down for me, please. Okay, now, Mr. Scott, I'm going to, there's some finer points I want you to see. He's got his toes pulled back, not too strained. Sometimes the foot lands a little forward and loose. That, it's not going to kill you, but the small bones of the foot, when they hit, they smack together, just like the small bones in the hand. And you got to take care of that because these things can snap very easily. He's also keeping his ankle off as he pulls that back. At this point, the knee is pointing up to the ceiling and he's flush on, on, the, on here. This hand can pretty much do what it needs to do to get out of the way and then it's just his land. All right? Now, the, the way to learn that, Mr. Scott, come on, is very easy. We can just, I just have him just like a little training methodology here. I have him grab here. I'm right there with him. Grab my hand. And I'm just going to put him down on the ground and Scott's going to do a roll for himself. So I'm going to lead him down, and this would be just like he was a brand new beginner. Okay? And most of the beginners have more problem getting started than they do actually taking a fall. It's the fear of the fall. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Okay, that's all our okemi that we're going to do with Dojo TV so far as the falling for Aikido. There's other uh, martial arts on Dojo TV uh, that, that we have that have involved falling and we'd like to have you take a look at those guys and their techniques on how to fall and add it all together, whatever you wish. But that's Aikido falling and it's all the falls I'm going to cover because uh, I think that this all uh, anyone's necessary. Let me explain something. There is a learning how to fall without a partner throwing you and there's falling with a partner throwing you. So unless you're very confident with your falls, you're not going to be confident enough when someone's throwing you and you're going to be a little edgy and you're going to stop and that person's going to hurt a joint or something. So get these falls down. Practice them. Practice them on a bed. Take a double carpet anywhere. Okay, now we're going to take a look at some of the very unique wrist stretching exercises of Aikido and some of the body movement exercises of Aikido. I'm going to have some help with my assistant, Mr. Scott Sobel. Okay, I'm going to have Scott stand on this one, all right, and he's going to go ahead and go through the basic wrist stretches, and I'll go ahead and give you Japanese terminology, and then we're going to go ahead and talk you through what we're trying to look for with these wrist stretches. So it's not just some mindless motion that you're doing and not getting any benefit. In Aikido, it is extremely important that we not only stretch our muscles, but we stretch and lube up our joints. Uh, since there's a, probably 50% joint man manipulation in Aikido, or throws that manipulate the joint and then throw you, you need to stretch out these joints, especially the wrist, because that is the main key on a lot of Aikido uh, te techniques. What I like to go ahead and do is first introduce 
The first wrist stretch we want to introduce is called the Kotegaishi Undo. Kotegaishi Undo, Undo meaning exercise, is the first wrist stretch you're going to go ahead and do. Uh, and what you're going to do is have your, start with your left hand and have your palm face you. The other hand will put the thumb between the ring and pinky knuckle. The rest of the hand will be underneath his thumb. He will now turn it outside and now he'll bend toward his pinky toward here and he'll feel a stretching in this area here. And then what I'll have Scott do is maybe hold that for a second and release that. Do that five to ten times, kind of like that, and then your wrist, your wrist stretch for the Kota Gaishi will be there. Now when you get these things done to you, we start out in Aikido very slow. We want to go ahead and give you a mediocre uh, pressure on your joints to have you understand what power this would do to your joints, but we don't want to tear you up. But I can't say that for beginners. So when you're practicing with other people, people get excited, they learn these techniques, and they snap in there. And if you're not stretched out, you're out of Aikido or anything for a couple of weeks. So that's make it very important that before you do any Aikido motion that you do these wrist stretches. Very important. Take a couple seconds to do it. Okay, so again, we'll start with the right hand, same thing, same kodagaishi or no, palm facing. He places the ring, the, 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 the ring and pinky finger knuckle will have the thumb across it. You have the of the thumb underneath. Do not want to hold the wrist. If you hold the wrist, you're blocking it. It's no way it can stretch. So make sure that the wrist is open for you to stretch it. Stretch it dead center down. And he'll do this five, four to five times. And that is the Kote Gaishi Ondo. Wrist turnout technique. Or wrist turnout exercise to stretch your wrist. First one we do. Okay, moving on to this, the second one we do. This is called Ikkyo, Ikkyo Undo, first pinning control exercise. Ikkyo Undo is, we're going to have an arm, we'll start with the left again. We're going to have the uh, hand flat, and what we're going to have you do is bring the energy in center. And he will bring his elbow into his, his uh, fingertips, and he'll stretch that. Now this is the Ikkyo Pin. The Ikkyo Pin is the first pinning control you learn. When you do this, you don't want to just push your wrist straight back. Scott, if you notice Scott, Scott's pulling, he's gently bringing in his elbow with his finger, and nice, nice, smooth stretch. And do the other side, Scott. Okay, like again, I said five to ten times. Keep it centered. And you don't want to do it where you don't feel anything. You want to do it where you feel a lot of tingling, a little discomfort, not damaging but it's only stretching the tendons and the ligaments and the muscles involved to the point where you can exercise and do Aikido, not to the point where you're going to have my hands doing this. If you stretch it too much, it'll be like this. Okay? So I've seen that happen, and that is true. I've seen someone where they've stretched it to the point here so, so hard, and they kept on doing it. When they did the, te the technique was applied on them, it was so, there wasn't nothing, any, anything there, and the guy ended up going from the wrist, getting the torque, to the elbow getting the torque, and it really, it was a non, not a pretty scene. So let's go ahead and do this safely, moderately, and, but it definitely has to be done before any practice of Aikido. Okay, now we're going to move on to the Nikkyo, the Nikkyo Undo, the second pinning control exercise. Now this one is, is a must. And why is this is a must is this is one of the most excruciating, and I'm beginning to be very little melodramatic about that one, excruciating pain on this technique. This technique is one of, the, one of the classic pinning controls of Aikido. It's in other grappling martial arts as well. But the difference between us and them is that we put a little bit more of our energy into it. Not force, but more of breath energy into the Nikkyo. We want to take the hand, thumb up, Tuck the thumb in, wrap around the whole entire hand across the bridge of the knuckles. Now, Mr. Scott will bring his hand in so that we get the Z motion here with the arm. Now he'll turn his pinky toward his nose and do a circular oval type of motion going out and just stretching that. And the key is to push this in tight, push this in tight, and then bring it in, and then, and you'll feel it, you'll feel it. But it'd be better if you feel it then than someone laying one on you and you're not stretched because it will go. It will snap like a guitar string. Again, the Nikkyo Undo, second pinion control exercise, the third in our series of stretching for the wrist.
Okay, thank you, Mr. Scott. All right, now, the last one that we do, and then we do other, other type of stretching here and there, natural type of stretching. The last one that is a mandatory stretching for a wrist in Aikido is Sun Kyo Undo. Sun Kyo Undo, I'm gonna have him kind of put the arm up, I'm gonna have him a little differently here, just kind of have him dangle this a little bit. And he got the knife edge here of the hand. I'm gonna have him put the other one slipping on like a paper clip, all the way tight, and I'm gonna have him turn the torque toward him. As he, as he can't torque it anymore, he's now gonna extend the arm out. And he'll keep on doing that. Now Sun Kyo, all right, is one that is used by a lot of law enforcement, a lot of security. It's a great come along. It's a great come along for someone to be a cop in it that needs to be escorted to a squad car or, or uh, into a jail cell. So I've taught this technique to uh, law enforcement police, correctional officers, U.S. Marshals, anyone that needs to do any type of apprehending and escorting prisoners. Beautiful technique. Why is it a beautiful technique? Because it keeps the people on their feet and you can keep them mobile and when you stretch this out the technique uh, is not applied properly you could probably take a little bit so what we want to do when we do our wrist stretches on especially things like Sankyo is that we want to make sure that we, the person practicing with you your nage person practicing the technique or gay person receiving the technique is lubed up enough so you can put a little bit of torque in there and really not inhibit your energy. The thing with Aikido is these exercises are very important so you can go ahead and not limit to how full tilt we can go. We know there's no equipment except for our geese. There's no safety equipment on us. So we have to go with a mutual cooperation. We also have to use common sense. Lube thy body up, get thyself in shape, okay? And then you will have a, be a better uke for your practitioner that's working with you, the more you guys are in shape, the more you guys work together, the more Aikido can be uninhibited. And with an internal art like Aikido, we do not want any inhibit motion whatsoever. So what I'd like to go ahead and do is uh, go through the four, uh, the four again, and I'll name them, and he'll show them slow, and then we'll move on. Again, our first one again we showed you was Kota Gaishi Undo. We'll get a little close up on that if we can. Okay, and I'll go to the other hand and show Ikyo Undo. And notice the pace that he's doing. He's not jerking into it, he's just doing a nice little stretch. And then we'll switch hands and go with Nikyo Undo. And again, switch hands and go to Sankyo window. Okay, now we're getting involved into uh, the movement of Aikido. Uh, there's certain different Japanese terminologies for footwork and body movement and all this. I basically work with one terminology. Uh, you know, not everybody wants to learn Japanese language completely. Uh, they just want to learn Aikido but there happens to be a lot of Japanese terminology used in, in traditional Aikido, uh, which is a good thing because it kind of keeps it pure to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the original country, Japan, that it came from. But it's good for people all over the world to work out, and it's all in one language. It's Japanese. So what we're going to go ahead and do is get very generic on five movements of, of, of what we're going to call taisabaki, or body movement. First movement we want to go is learning how to roll the hips into rolling the hips into pinning motions, into getting the the uh, extremity of the attackers make a circular motion with his arm. And the way to do that is not just from extremities. The way to do that is to is to, to roll with your hips. And learn how to roll with these hips. So the first exercise we're going to show you is something called funakoki undo, rowing exercise. He's going to step out, and I'm going to have Scott step out into a, just a, you know, a little bit, not so wide, Mr. Scott, just right there, and into like a hanmi, a triangle stance facing this way. And then he's going to have his hands at his hips, and he's going to just let the wrist relax, and he's going to bring them out, 
and he's going to relax the shoulders, and he's going to exhale, and he's going to bring it back into the hips, and then he sees moving his hips. He comes out. Of course, the knee does bend, but the hips do move. And he's going to do this briskly. And he's going to, I'm going to give him a tone. Kind of sound like a little bit like the Wizard of Oz, you know. Hee-ho, hee-ho, I'm going to have him say. But it'll make him breathe out deeply and inhale deeply. Hee-ho, you know, he Oh, you know, and, and, and when you inhale like this, with these exercises, I want him to warm up his hips, flexors, and, and everything here, keep his back straight, and really work on the breathing. Now, I'm going to have him do five of these rowing exercises, Funokogi Undo, done like we do them in the beginning of class. Ready? And I'll give Mr. Scott a count. And each. Hit. Knee. Hit. Song. Hit. She. Hit. Angle. Hit. All right, now we'll switch his legs. And I want you to turn the other way, Mr. Scott, so you can give me that it. angle. Okay, very good. And again, each. Hit. Knee. Hit. Song. Hit. So he did it on his own, and, and he's got that rhythm. What you would do to, in Japan, the Fowler of Aikido really got into this exercise. He would really throw himself into it. And what it does is it learns you to get this oval roll with your hips using the, the, the knees as like a shock absorber. So when we do things like this with this rowing exercise, you see where it comes from. You know, it's, 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 it's that type of thing where it comes from. Ikkyo, uh, technique would be very well done with a good rowing exercise behind it. The next one we're going to talk to you about is Shomenuchi Kyo Undo. Now I'm going to get into all that, what that means, but basically this is going to be a high peri extension exercise. It's going to make him move off the line and enter a little bit. Now there's two motions in Aikido. We either enter and take it right off the line on an angle, or we call a multi or rimi. A multi or a remi is basically the terminology that's been used for an entering uh, in front of motion. And the other motion is called tenkan or ula, which means turning or going around and behind, bringing around uh, circularly. What we're going to go ahead and do is show you right now is the, is the uh, multi version or the remi version or the entering version of a high peri extension. This is for getting off the line and getting to someone and just making one streamlined motion to them. And he's going to play a high parry like he's catching a basketball or something. We're going to go ahead and let him go with the same thing, left leg forwards, and then we're going to go ahead and do the count. I'm going to go do three, but watch what happens here on the first one. And ready, prepare hands at the side, and each. Okay, now what he's doing, knee, is he's coming up and not blocking, but absolutely his intent would be to get the guy striking, not down here, but to get him as he's going back. As he's going back. If he pulls back, you enter in and come in, and then we can come up with thousands of techniques of whatever. What we need to do is get off the line. So what I'm going to have Mr. Scott do is show this technique, and he's going to gain a little ground with it. All right, so watch him do just one for me. Each. And the other side, knee. Okay, very good. That is called... High peri extension exercise, Japanese, there's several different names. We call it Shomenuchi Ikkyo window because Shomenuchi Ikkyo technique is, this is a Shomenuchi strike. This is an Ikkyo technique that we're going to do. And as he comes down, I would do this and then do finish the technique into a pin control. So to, as he comes up, this technique teaches you how to, when you move, make the initiative to complete the move and not stutter step into it. Next one we're going to work with is we're going to work with this same high peri extension exercise. And I'm going to have Scott, Mr. Scott stay sideways to you. Now hopefully we can get him dead center, center to you guys where you can see. Now what I have Mr. Scott do is do this peri exercise, but this is to teach you how to pivot your feet. It's called Zengo Window, pivoting exercise. Very important when we throw technique in Aikido, especially throws, especially a lot of throws against multiple attackers. We need to learn how to open our hips to throw the hip behind the power of the, uh, of the throw. Okay? So what we need to do is be open and loose. Now he's going to have to position his feet so he can pivot his hips open on both sides. So we're going to have him start where he's facing right now and Step out whatever leg you wish, Mr. Scott. Now he's high parry. Now he brings it back to his side and then pivots completely and brings it up again. 
and it just slides a little bit to make some ground up there because, and then as he gets more comfortable with his balance and his posture and his footing, he's going to go a little bit more fluid. And I'm going to let him do that on his own without a count. All right, now, very good. He's very, very structured. He's good, comfortable in the shoulders. And now I'm going to ask Mr. Scott to be static. And when I say each or one, he's going to move both of them on the one move. And he's going to show you how we enhance the pivot that way. Step forward. Each! Knee! So. Okay, and this is to be practiced. The better the more you practice it, eventually you'll be able to pivot very quickly and you start here and you bring it down. Okay, and then you can move it together. So eventually, his structure is very correct. And eventually, as you get that down, you understand your body positioning, your balance, and your posture, you'll move quicker. That is called Zengo Window. It's one of the major pivoting exercises. The next exercise I'd like to work with is, and there's more, more to that, is an extension to this even further. And that is called Hoppo Undo, eight directional exercise. We're covering all points of the compass with this exercise. In Aikido, we have multiple attacks. So we have to, instead of frantically just looking and letting them come to us, we can go to the points of the attacker and take it to them and make them jump before they needed to jump. And they're still being the attacker. Just because we get off the line doesn't mean that we're still we're aggressive. What I like to do is have Mr. Scott step his right leg forward, and he's going to do this high parry extension, and he's going to do it in eight different directions. And I'm going to go ahead and count them out, and this front will be his first direction, so that'll be each, and knee, then song. Now this is actually, you're making a cross, and then you're going to make an X. So you're covering all points of the compass. You want a uh, sheep. Go. Roku. Siege. And hatch. Okay, now, Mr. Scott has just went all uh, for the points. Now, we have to have this. Anyone needs to continue to practice any type of kata motion or thing. So we want to start off one motion and end at one motion, uh, at one location. But the motion is should be the same through the whole form. This is not a form per se, but it is a uh, directional exercise that eventually he'll start taking quicker. And I'm going to go ahead and let him go on his own. I'm not going to count, but I'd like to, him to do it as fluidly as possible and cover all eight directions for me. And any at your time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Scott. Okay, eventually, as you get more into Aikido, there is a sword, a Vulcan kata, wooden sword kata, with that same direction. We call Hapo Gili, which is eight directional cut kata. But that's down the road, and we'll get that in the, in, in the future tapes. Um, what I'd like to go ahead now is start to go into the turning motions that we talked about. Stand up for me, please. Now, the turning motions develop into two different things. You start out with a motion we call Udafori Undo. Udafori Undo is just learning to swing the arms. Just, 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 just learning to swing the arms around and let the shoulders be loose. I'm going to let Mr. Scott just let that just get the freedom of them upper arms movement. Then I'm going to have him step his left leg back. Okay, now what he's going to go ahead and do, turn a little bit more side with the torso, uh, not so much that, just a little side there. Thank you. What he's going to go ahead and do is he's going to step up with the back leg, which is his left, and watch what he's going to do here. Wrap the leg, step around, and here. Now I'm going to let him come back and forth across, and I hope the camera angle is good to see everything. See behind where he's putting his hand, you see? Right here. All right. Now, what we're going to do is turn this Udafori Undo, uh, uh, what this is now turned into is called something called Udafori Chuaku Undo. Udafori Chuaku Undo is lateral sway. Oh, not lateral sway. It's a turn, spinning motion, swinging the arms, all that together at once. So watch what he does real quickly. 
There he goes. That's nice. Hidden fluid. Hidden fluid. Okay, see how he's moving? Keeping the one, keeping very open. All right, now, Rudifori, the arm swinging. Rudifori, drew up window. The arm swinging with the step was what we just did. Pretty good warm up exercise in Aikido class. Now we're going to change that, keep the step the same, and call this next one Tenkan window, turning exercise. Now watch how he starts off with this one. Starts with the left leg out, he's going to offer his hand out like we would in Aikido to, to, to practice grabs and doing our moves. And he's going to step his first move in just a simple around clockwise pivot. And then he starts stepping, replacing the hand every time he steps. Watch him do it a couple of times. There we go, I'm going to let him go. This is called Tenkan Undo, turning exercise. Okay, very good. Very good. So there's some similarities. The reason we do this one first is because with this is that you might have movements, you open and slow. Right? You might have movements where we go like this and move. I'm not going to get into it, all the throws today. I'm moving into movement. And then we have movement that might be like this. And then we take them from somewhere. So there is some different movement required on turning and different movement required on entering, it all depends whether you're going inside the circle or outside the circle. And inside the circle to me would be inside to here. And the outside would be outside here. So the movement requires whether you're going to go in front of the person and do a technique, come in front of the person and do a technique, you know, that type of thing, or you're going to go around the person and do a turn. You're going to do around the person Okay, you know, and do turning, lots of footwork turning. So with that, Aikido is a very motion-filled style, more short style. A lot of footwork in it, a lot of body movement. Reflexiveness is your best bet. Okay, let's begin here with what we call etiquette. In any Budo training, the martial way of Japan, etiquette is very important in the whole growth of the martial arts training, no matter what martial art you do in Japan, whether it's Judo, Aikido, Karate, whatever that is, etiquette is very, very important. Honor is very, very important in the Japanese martial arts, especially Aikido, being that it's, you're dealing with mutual cooperation and learning how to train and learn the techniques. So you have to be aware. If you cannot be aware to say yes sensei, no sensei, bow at the proper times, you're not aware. So we can't, why would we teach you a technique that's been handed down for the last 300 years that's lethal? Why would we do that? So let's make sure that etiquette's there, shows me clarity of mind, and we'll go from there. It's just polite. It's simply polite and safe to have etiquette. When an Aikido student comes in, the first thing they're going to learn when it comes to etiquette is how to bow on and off the mat. And when any time they get on in the mat, they have to face the front, which we call the showman, which means frontal area, the showman and they have to bow before they get on the mat. So hands to the side and bow, like any other martial art. When they get on the mat, they line up, and I have my assistant, Mr. Scott Sobel, come. I'm gonna have him face you, but you being the showman. I'm gonna guess you must. You'll be the showman. So he's gonna face you like you're the front wall of an Aikido school. So what's happening is he's sitting in Seiza, the typical, typical Japanese sitting position in martial arts. The feet, the knees are two, two to three widths apart, fist widths apart. Toes are together back. Scott's got a relaxed shoulder here. His hands are casually on his lap, but ready. And his toes are together in the back. His butt is on his heels, and he's prepared. Now, this, this sitting position dictates discipline right off the bat. Just the way he's looking, keeping his posture straight, but keeping himself relaxed. Out of this position, the first thing he's going to learn is how to bow. Now, in Aikido, there's two ways that I've learned in Japan how to bow. Some schools teach you with both hands down. So Scott will come down in a triangle, both together, and bow at the waist up, and then he comes up. That's pretty much typical of most Aikido schools. Now, I have been in some schools with a little bit older lineage that have bow like they're in combat, which is that they're symbolizing that there is a sword on the hip. So they will bow first with the left hand down, Keep that right hand ready to draw that sword at any time, and then the right hand, kind of looking a little bit more at who they're bowing to, and then right, 
and then left. All right, now, the right is free to pull a blade. Now, in Aikido being a way of harmony, that kind of bowing symbolizes we're ready to do combat. We're not ready to do combat in Aikido. We're ready to defend ourselves in Aikido. There's a difference. There's a complete difference. The complete difference is, is that in combat, you would do techniques offensively to, to, to claim victory. In defense, Aikido, reflexive self-defense, you just want to get home. And you don't want them on you. And you'll do whatever you have to to get them off of you as long as it's in the lines of Aikido. So with this, we need to go ahead and show you, this is the way you bow, this is the way you sit and say so. So he would be in a line, okay? He would say, so Mr. Scott is the senior. I would come in, bow, as this instructor. I'll sit down in front, the showman wall will be here. And then Mr. Scott will be the senior. He will call out a saying called showman ni re, which means face the front, part and bow. So say that. Show me the And we bow. Come back up. And then I will turn around and face the group. As I turn around and face the group, the senior will then say, Sensei ni re, which means face the teacher and bow. Sensei ni re. And as we bow, everybody says, sensei. Which means please share or please teach us your knowledge. As we do that, we just bowed in. And then we set up for warm-up exercises, what have you. Now, we're not finished with editing. This is the entry coming into the mat. Leaving the mat, everything's the same, except at the end, all right, show me ray, sensei ni ray. At the end, they don't say on the geshemas. At the end, they don't say please share. They thank us. They say at the end, And then we bow which means a very formal, very formal, I, I can't tell you how much I, 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 I can thank you for this. Domo, domo arigato, arigato, kind of informal, thanks, thank you. But when you say domo arigato gozaimashita, that means, thank you, God, thank you very much, thank you, thank you, thank you. Down here, thanking somebody. Very formal. When you say it in Japan, the Japanese kind of look at you kind of like, this guy's awful formal. You know, so sometimes, and then sometimes you don't know whether you're not saying enough. You say arigato, and you get a Japanese master look at you and go, hmm. So I figured I breached an etiquette thing somewhere. So it's very important, especially if you, and on Dojo TV people, let me tell you, it's very important. If you're going to train overseas, and you don't have this stuff down, you will ostracize. You'll never walk into a dojo. Because etiquette is, is very formal. How you present yourself if you walk into a dojo in Japan is going to be what you get from an instructor. If you're rude, you'll get nothing. If you're very, not brown nosy, but very polite, very etiquette, they feel that you're very attentive, they'll show you. The masters will unleash some stuff. You'll be thankful just for a good thank you here and there. The technique you'll gain. All right, now we're going to stand up. Now we're going to show you some etiquette when we pair off. Now we, we pair off, we can either, if, you know, standing, okay, and then we do our, our thing, or many, and say so, huh? Hey, and we're getting ready to work off, we just, Sensei has just broke us up for class, and Scott's my partner, so we look at, I want to get you mass. And then we have fun and train serious, okay? Very important, don't go into working out with somebody like, just come up here, hey, Scott, come on, it's okay. no, 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 not in a formal IQ class. At the end, I do like people, uh, when they break up and, and bow out, they like to come up, thank you very much, it's excellent, excellent class. I do like that, okay? So that is not etiquette, it's, it is etiquette. It's being polite, it's being kind, it's being, uh, you know, communicating with someone. You need to make sure that that is aware of through everyone in that dojo. Or someone that doesn't have it could put a cancer in the dojo big time. Get one rude person in a dojo, you can feel it. You need to see the guy. It's like a dirt on a white wall. You notice it. So you need to make sure that this is very much important. If you guys just want to get into techniques, that's fine. But if you want to get into the formalities of traditional Budo, Aikido per se, then you must have this, what we call Reiki etiquette down. And never forget it. With the etiquette, it gives us a common ground to know, you know, at this point in time, if I have anything to say to this guy, I gotta say it. I've got a bad shoulder, don't throw me so hard. You know, whatever. 
This is the time to communicate. Once you've done this, and then you've said nothing, you better be ready to train Buddha. Or get off the mat. Don't come in hurt. Don't complain about pain here and here. That's bad etiquette. Come in and train, complain about pain. Not tell somebody about it. And then complain that they hurt you. Or come in with pain. Not tell somebody about it. Or say, I'm okay, let me go ahead. Because this person can't train full tilt now. That's a part of etiquette. It ain't about you. It's not about what you're doing with it, it's about learning the art. And, and Aikido, it's a mutual cooperation art. You need to have your partner with you on this or you're not going to be able to pick up the techniques. What would you think if I said to Mr. Scott, Mr. Scott just did a fantastic technique and I went up to Mr. Scott, and etiquette-wise, I said, Mr. Scott, it's fantastic technique, it's fantastic, doing good. What would you say to that compliment? Mr. Scott, what would you say normally to that compliment? Aikido class. I Aikido. apologize for my inadequate techniques and say, I'll try harder to master the technique. I complimented him. What happened was, is that when I was in Japan, one of the masters told me, you're doing great, you're fantastic, you're doing right up to par for a foreign correspondent. And I said, thank you very much. I got the Kazama said, thank you very much. And I got tapped on the back by an American that knew better, that had been in Japan and said, don't thank him. Just say that and say, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. You humble pie it and try to be mean it, okay? Because they don't compliment you to go ahead and make you boost your ego. We don't, they don't need to do that over there. They, we have to do it here. They compliment you just to give you guidance to say you're on the right path. And that's all it is. That's all it is. It's not like, I feel great now. It's like, okay, I'm on the right line. Good, I can get serious into more training. Sensei says I'm doing the right down the right road. See the difference? So what I'd like to go ahead and finish off with here on the etiquette situation, and then we'll get into other things, is I'd like to go ahead and finish off with simply a bow out. And a bow out will simply be us facing you as the showman. And we sit down. All right. And then he calls it. Showman, hey! Okay, now, he'll stay down low until I get off the mat. I walk off the mat. I don't know if you can see me, but say this is off the mat. If I walk off the mat, I turn around, face the showman, and bow, and walk off the mat. He doesn't get up until I leave. Why all that? Does it look like slave labor? No, it's just a matter of, if you're going to train as a disciple under a sensei in the bad Japanese Budo, martial ways, the Aikido, you're going to train mind and body. He's an educator in you in every facet of your life. Manners is definitely part of your life. Learn them, you learn them well, your training in Budo and Aikido will be painless. We'll see you next time.